ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to another episode of The Cider Drinker. And I say, old bean, we are uh, going a little bit upmarket today because today's cider I actually bought when uh, my wife and myself visited Chatsworth Estate um, sometime in the summer last year. I think it was like June, July time, something like that. Um, and around that, I think it's a huge place. If you've never been to um, Chatsworth Estate or Chatsworth House, then um, it really is a good place to go. In fact, it's a great place to go. Loads of amazing scenery. Um, Chatsworth House, albeit some of it was closed off, unfortunately. But um, oh, and actually, it was around Christmas time. That was it, because they were getting prepared for the Christmas market. But yeah, lovely, lovely place to visit. And they also have a farm shop just uh, down the road from it, which had loads of supplies, including a couple of ciders. So today, for the first time, I have a Dali Abbey cider. And today I'm doing a bottle of their dry. Now, I believe they also had a sweet available, uh, but I only got this one and one other one, which I'll be doing in the future. Uh, so this is picked and pressed in Derbyshire. Comes in 330 ml bottles and is a rather nice 5% ABV. So yeah, quite a nice strength there. Uh, so yeah, this is um, in, oh yeah, Darley Abbey, Darley Abbey Cider Company. So yeah, picked and pressed on site, a lightly carbonated dry cider. Simple as that. That's literally what it says on the side of the bottle. We're an artisan cider business based in Darley Abbey. Our cider is made using a single year's harvest of locally grown apples pressed during late autumn, then left to mature into a deliciously crisp and refreshing cider. Ah, nice old uh, buzzwords that have been used there. So yeah, didn't even realise that these guys existed, didn't even know there was a cider company based in Dali Abbey. So yeah, interesting to see what this one is going to bring to the table. I'm always um, up for trying out some new companies. So yeah, let's waste no more time. Let's get this, let's get the crown off and let's just see what I make of it, shall we? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's got, wow, that's got some nice, um, at least off the bottle, it's got some nice spicy notes to it there. A little bit of grass maybe as well. Nice. Right, let's get it poured in. Right, I can't, couldn't see any sediment there, so I'm assuming it is going to be uh, filtered down. Ugh. I'm in dirty glass again, must, well not dirty glass, but just not dried properly, so excuse the bubbles on the side. But yeah, it's um, definitely lightly carbonated, as you can see right there. It is um, crystal clear, filtered down, so yeah, nice. And yeah, quite a nice colour. It's almost, well, it's interesting. It's sort of like a deep straw-like golden colour, but it's also got sort of a, an orangey pinky hue to it, which I don't know if the camera is picking up on there, but yeah, not the um, usual golden straw colours that you normally find with uh, these sorts of cider. So yeah, it's definitely got a little bit of, um, little bit of character to it. So what's it smell like on the glass? Okay, yeah, so yeah. There's nice spiciness to it, a touch of funkiness going on there, but generally there's a little, a little bit of a zesty, zesty smell there. Maybe getting a touch of, a touch of um, apple, apple concentrate, maybe a bit of um, apple tizer there. Green apple, fresh green apple. Yeah, no, that's how I'm smelling really inviting, really pleasing. So, well, let's waste no more time, shall we? Cheers, everyone. Um, is this one to watch out for when you visit Chatsworth Estate? Let's find out. Cheers. Oh. oh, yeah, that is dry. Oh, wow, okay. Ooh. Ooh, okay, yeah, that is, um... Wow. That's nice. Oh, whoa. Okay. I don't know why I wasn't expecting it to be that tart. Wow, that is lip-puckeringly sour. That, it's nice though, it's not like sour beers or anything, it's not like a Lambic style. It's definitely more acidic and tart, but when you take that initial sip, your insides of your mouth, or the inside of my mouth, just goes like that. The, the moisture just gets sucked out. That's really nice, but good thing is there is a nice little bit of sweetness and juiciness to balance out that acidity that initially comes out. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not all just about the acidity and the dryness there. There is that nice balance um, of, uh, yeah, almost like a fresh green apple taste underneath everything. Gives it sort of like this sweet, juicy characteristic, characteristic undertone to it. Um, the finish, lingering, dry, slightly grassy, citrusy. 
definitely a touch of uh, like lemon or something like that going on at the at the back end there. Um, yeah, wow, this is this is really nice actually. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting. I mean, that normally when they say a dry cider, it's more uh, verging on the sides of like a medium dry, especially with um, you know if you get it from a farm shop or something. But no, dry. This is a definite dry cider for sure. So uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised with this one. That's for sure. Anyway, <laughs> let's go for a final taste for a final verdict. Whoa. Wow. God, that is it's Wow, that is so Moorish. Wow, that is so good. Um, the more that I'm tasting it, the more I'm enjoying it. Um, because I've had a few dry ciders in the past that have just been dry. That's it. There's just been no balance to it. I'm looking at you, Q Garden Cider. But this is a really well-made dry cider. I'll say that. Um, it's just got a lot of character behind it. It's got a nice balance to it. Um, it's got a slightly light body behind it, but to be fair, that sort of just makes it that much more drinkable. I can't remember how much I paid for this uh, particular cider, um, but considering it's uh, a Chatsworth Estate farm shop, I would imagine it was um, a little bit more than you normally pay for this uh, sort of size cider. But I'll, de I'll definitely tell you this now, it is very much worth it because it is a really, really good dry cider. I wish I'd got um, the other one of theirs now, but hey, you never know unless you try these things first off, don't you? So yeah, a great first impression for uh, Darley Abbey Cider for me, and I will definitely be keeping my eyes open for um, more of their range in the future. Well, if I visit Chatsworth Estate, then obviously I'll be getting another bottle of theirs. Um, but for now, I am actually gonna go and give Darley Abbey's dry cider a well-deserved nine out of 10. It's really really well made and it's actually I think it's been a while since I've had a really good dry cider on the channel so yeah it's good um you know it makes a change from like the cider pops and stuff that I've been um, doing so recently so yeah definitely definitely keep your eyes peeled for this one it is most definitely worth it especially if you do like your things on the dry or acidic side it's gonna tick all those boxes for you but with that said, that's another episode of The Cider Drink for you guys. I hope you liked it. And as usual, I'll be back with another delicious and tasty cider soon. Until then, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a good time. And I'll see you on the next review. Cheers. Cheers.